Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready for the day while reviewing the brand new Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eye Palette, Smoky Eyes Are Forever. This launched for 48 hours only on the Charlotte Tilbury website. Unfortunately, it's already gone, but there is a landing page where you can sign up to be notified when it does launch. And as soon as I hear an official date, I will of course update you guys. I knew that I was going to purchase this as soon as I saw photos because I love my Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. I also picked up the larger palette from last year. And I just think this is the way to go in terms of Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow. If you love her quads, you're going to love these bigger palettes, but these retail for $75 versus $53 for the quad. So I just think it is such a better buy, even though it is a larger palette with 12 pans. They're pretty thin. It's a nice slim palette, so it really doesn't take up that much room in the drawer. In fact, I pulled out the other two palettes, so these just sit together in the front of the top drawer. They don't take up a ton of space. They're very easy and convenient to grab. What's great about them is that they're pretty neutral, so you can create very easy everyday looks, smoky eyes, a couple of them have pops of color, so if you want to create something a bit more dramatic, you can. I just find them to be very wearable, easy to use, just very practical palettes, especially for the price. And I love the sleek black exterior of this year's palette, the shiny black, it looks so chic. You open it up, you have the 12 pans separated by love eyes, power eyes, happy eyes, and confident eyes. So you have groups of three. That way, in case you're not a professional makeup artist, you're sort of a beginner, your eyes kind of know what to do instinctively whenever you look at this palette. That's another thing I love about Charlotte Tilbury, how she lays everything out. It's just nice to see everything very organized. Here are my three palettes side by side. On top is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize palette from last holiday season. In the center is my beloved Pillow Talk palette. And then at the bottom is the new Smoky Eyes Are Forever. The only color story I probably won't use is Power Eyes just because I don't wear a lot of greens. But I still think I can use this first shadow. So I think these two I will probably not get a ton of use out of, but every other shade in the palette I think is stunning. I'm going to begin with my face today. So I pulled out my Hollywood Flawless Filter. I use the shade 3, light medium, and I'm going to use this as a primer underneath. So I'm just starting in the center points of the face and then blending out. The only thing I have on my face right now is moisturizer. It gives the skin the most beautiful glow, especially underneath foundation. And since I'm going to use the Airbrush Flawless Finish Foundation, it's a mouthful, which is very matte, I like to combine that with something really glowy underneath. Doesn't feel oily, helps the makeup to stick, adhere to the skin, it fills in fine lines and pores, and just looks really pretty. In the foundation, I use the shade 6 Neutral. And I know it doesn't look like a perfect match. The last time I used this on camera, somebody said, it's too yellow. This is the best shade for me. I have tried them all, and this is the only one that works, or it's the one that looks the closest. So is it a perfect match? No, unfortunately it's not, but it will have to do. So I'm just doing a pump and a half on the back of my hand. Today I'm using this Sephora Pro Foundation number 56 brush. I'm just going to start in the center of the face and blend out. That was my biggest struggle with this foundation when it first launched was finding the right shade. I feel like the undertones are a bit exaggerated. So it's either really orange, really pink, really cool tone, really yellow. And you kind of just have to find the one that works the best. I really didn't use that much. I still have a lot of product left on the back of my hand. I probably could have gotten away with just one full pump and that's it. I don't want to layer too much product because it has so much coverage and a matte finish. It can look a bit like a foundation mask if you're not careful. I can still see my skin shining through, my little freckles. Definitely have some glow from the Hollywood Flawless Filter, so this right now is perfect. I'm going to blend down the neck with the excess product. Even though it's not an ideal match, 
This will help blend it into my skin. And I did sunless tan last night, so I have some color. I'm using the Hourglass Concealer in the shade Birch. I placed an order for my new holiday palette and I don't even think it has shipped yet. Everybody else is posting their reviews and my order still says processing. It's so sad, but I can't really complain because I had a $50 credit to Sephora. So I spent $20 on it. <laughs> so I'm not going to complain. I will just wait patiently, but it is available at Sephora. I think only the light shade, maybe they've updated it, but that's available at Sephora and the entire collection, both palettes, both of the larger palettes and then the little bronzer palette is available on the Hourglass website. I will link it down below in case you'd like to check it out. So now I'm going in with my F79 Sigma brush. This is my concealer brush every single time. It does such a great job. It's the perfect size, the perfect density. I'll rotate all of my other brushes, but never my concealer brush. I washed all of my brushes over the weekend. I finally made time. Everything is nice and clean. It's always the best feeling. As I'm blending, I take any excess product from underneath the eye and I go on top of the eyelid to help prime. I go on the chin center of the forehead down the bridge of the nose and I use it to highlight. To set my concealer, I pulled out my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade 1, Fair, and I am blending that with the Sephora 79 Pro Contour Brush. I love this entire pro line from Sephora. They're very good. I generally use refer brushes, some BK Beauty brushes, and then these are really nice. And it's just the perfect size. I could see why this would be great for contour. I generally don't contour my cheeks. I really just do bronze with a larger brush, but it fits underneath the eye perfectly. This is a very mattifying powder, so I'm trying to use a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. Between the concealer and the powder, I am now looking like a ghost. So to warm up my skin, I have the Airbrush Bronzer. This is the matte bronzing powder, and I have the shade 2 Medium. I actually have two shades, the Medium and the Tan. And I don't really love either one, to be honest. I could probably mix them if I really wanted to, but I think this one is going to be best suited for today. It's just a little bit light. I can probably build it up a bit and it will be more natural. I really don't mind the medium. It's not quite as warm as other bronzers that I'm used to using. I find it to be slightly cool toned. Not bad and I actually really like it today. It's been a while since I've picked this up. I pulled out my Nudegasm face palette and I'm going into this peach shade right here and I'm going to use that as a blush. It's kind of a cheek topper, not really a true blush, but it does the trick. So I'm just brushing that on the tops of my cheeks. And then I just pulled out this BK Beauty 108 brush. I'm going into this creamy champagne highlight shade and this I'm going to apply to the center points of the face like the chin. Down the bridge of the nose, ball of the nose, Cupid's bow. And then I also like to do a little bit right above the eyebrows. Okay, just a little bit on the cheek. Right where I want it to be really beaming. I scooched in a little bit closer to the camera and I filled in my eyebrows. So now I'm going into this palette and I picked up a Refer 16 brush. And I am going to pick up this shade right here, the first shade of Power Eyes. It's kind of the perfect transition shade. Every palette needs one. 
And this is going in the crease. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I think I'm going to do two different looks. That way we can see some variety. Next, I picked up a flat shader brush. This is just an old Chanel concealer brush. And I'm going into the second shade right here of Love Eyes, and that's going to go on the inner lid. These metallic shadows feel so soft and buttery. They're very creamy. There are a couple shades in the palette that are a little bit drier, so you might want to use your fingers. This shade right here, although this swatched okay, but this one was a little bit light. This one and this one go on more like eyeshadow toppers. So it's not going to give you that really creamy, opaque finish like this one. Next, I picked up a rougher 13 brush and I'm going into this shade down here. This really deep chocolatey brown. And this is going to add depth in the outer V. That's pretty dark. I was thinking about going in with the black, but I don't really think I need to go in with the black. I love it. It's a very cool toned, deep chocolatey brown, unlike the dark brown that I always use in the Pillow Talk palette that has more warmth to it. So it's very dramatic. I like it. I picked up my flat shader brush again and I'm going into this shade, the first confidence eyes, confident eyes, kind of building that on top of that first pink sparkly shadow. With the rougher 13 brush, I am going to dip into that black just a teeny tiny bit just so we can test it out and I'm popping that right in the outer V and I'm not going to continue to blend it out. With a pencil brush, I'm picking up the original shade and I'm going to buff that beneath the lower lash line. And then using my fingers, I'm going to dip into this third sparkly shade. And very carefully, I'm going to pop that right on the center of the lid. A bunch of flex just fell on my cheek, but that's okay. Oh yeah, that looks really pretty. It's a very dramatic sparkly shade. It's a little bit crumbly, so you have to be careful. That's why I wanted to use my finger. thought maybe it would stick a little bit better. But man, do I have a ton of fallout. I actually think this palette in general so far does have more fallout than the other palettes, which is fine. I decided to do my face first. I could easily have just done eyes first, but something to keep in mind because with the Pillow Talk palette, I feel like I can just always do my face and I can do a very smoky, dramatic eye with that palette and I never really have a problem. This one, you just have to be careful. After every step, I'm checking my cheeks and then I'll go back with the powder brush if I need to. With another little small precision brush, I'm picking up that first pale shade. I'm gonna use that to very lightly highlight the brow bone. I don't know if this is gonna work, but same brush, I'm dipping into the sparkly shade. I wanna pop that on the inner corner. Oh yeah. It does work. Look number one is very smoky and dramatic, but I think you can probably picture it. This would be more of an evening out, special occasion, holiday party type of look. The first eye is now done. So I finished all of my eyeliner, I did mascara, and then I wanted to put something on the lips. So I went in with the Pillow Talk Lip Cheat. 
Runway Royalty. This is one of the super nudes. And then I topped that off with Champagne Diamonds. This is one of the collagen lip baths, I believe. But this is a beautiful combination on the lips. I love this. My Pillow Talk lip liner is almost gone. I use this just about every single day. Down to the nub, it's so sad. So I'll be needing to replace that soon. Look number two is starting the same way as look number one. I have my Refer 16 brush and I'm going into this shade right here. It really is the only transition shade. I was looking at my face trying to figure out what looks different and it's the bronzer. I'm so used to a warm bronzer that it's kind of throwing me. That and I haven't contoured my nose yet, but I will before the end of the video so you can see the complete look. I guess now is as good a time as ever to try to put these green shadows to work for me. I might as well try to use them since this is my initial review, the first impression. So I pulled out my flat shader brush and I'm going into the shimmery green. And this is going to go on the lid. You know, it's green, but it's not that green. Mm, I don't mind it, but I still just know that it's not really right for me. It's just not my color story. For the center, I'm going to pop this gold shade right here. I'm just going to pop that right on the center of the lid. It will help to open up the eye. It's pretty. I almost wish I had like a glitter glue. Kind of adds a neutral aspect to the look. It's much softer overall. In fact, I think I'm going to keep it soft instead of always adding depth in the outer V. We'll skip it. I'm going to go back with my original fluffy brush and just make sure it's nice and soft on top of the crease. With the pencil brush, I'm going to take that first shade in Power Eyes and I'm going to buff that beneath the lower lash line, same as we did on the other side. I'm going to pick up this shade right here and I'm going to use that to highlight the brow bone. There's not really another shade. I feel like most Charlotte Tilbury palettes and really most palettes in general have that light pearly shade, something that's similar to this to highlight the brow bone. But this one just has the matte shadow. This is way too sparkly. This would not work as a brow bone highlight. It definitely works as an inner corner highlight. So that's maybe one thing you might have to grab from another palette, but you can also just use your highlighter that you're using for the face. You could just go in with the matte shadow. It looks really pretty. So, not an essential. And I do appreciate the fact that they made the palette a little bit different, somewhat different. There's actually a lot of differences about this palette. The cooler tones, the mattes, the topper shades. I'm back. The second look is now complete. So I did my eyeliner. The same thing on both sides, that way it wouldn't look too wonky. So I did the little inner wing, the outer wing, same shades, and then mascara. The same mascara, it's the Pillow Talk mascara from Charlotte. I did contour my nose just a little bit using that Nudegasm palette, and then I popped a little bit of this Chanel Quintessence blush on the tops of my cheeks. Just so you know, every last thing I did. I felt like I needed a little color and I just think it looks so much better. Just a little bit. That way my face doesn't look so blank because I have this smoky eye over here, this one smoky eye. But this is eye look number two. And I really like it. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. The green isn't really throwing me because it's not really a, an emerald green or anything that's too jewel toned. 
In fact, I think it looks, kind of looks neutral. Does it even look green? I mean, I guess maybe compared to this side, but if all I had was this on, I'm not sure it would really look that green. I'll have to wait until I watch the video back. I didn't add any depth in the outer V. Of course, the eyeliner and the mascara does make it look a little bit darker. But this would be more of, I suppose, a daytime soft glam. I can't believe how much I like this. The shadows I knew were going to be amazing. I had high hopes for this palette. It's just as beautiful as I thought it would be. I love the black. I think this is so cool. I love the size of the palette. So wearable, so versatile, just like all of the other large palettes like this. So do you need it? Maybe not. If you already have all of the other palettes and you're looking to limit your purchases, then no, you don't. But I don't think you will be disappointed if you are contemplating this palette and you do pick it up. I think you will love it and you'll enjoy it, especially if you like all of the other Charlotte Tilbury palettes. So I love this. And I'm slowly but surely going through my pillow talk and you know, I'm starting to feel, I love that palette, but I'm starting to get a little bit sick of it. I don't know, because I use it every single day, kind of want to change change it up. Not too much. I'm not going to throw sparkles on my eyes every day, but it would be nice to switch that out with something like this to use as more of an everyday palette, go with more cool tones for a change. So maybe I'll start using this more often on a daily basis. Very versatile. I'm so happy with it. I love this green eye. I also really like this smoky eye. So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found it helpful in deciding whether or not this palette is right for you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.